Well, welcome back. Throughout Black History Month, we're taking time every day to spotlight and celebrate our history and culture. Today, we're taking a deep dive into quilting, a practice with a rich history dating back to slavery. Right now, Northwestern University has an entire quilt exhibit on display. The public is invited to view it from now until March 4th at the university's student union, so you have plenty of time to do that. And we have a treat here with us. Joining us now is one of the artists featured in that quilt exhibit, Tracy Von Manley. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Pleasure, Drina. Thank you for having me. Happy you're here to talk about a topic that I don't know much about, and you're also assistant professor with the Department of African American mm -hmm. Studies. Yes, I've been there since 2004. Oh wow, mm -hmm. long time. Long time. So you're the perfect person to talk about how quilting and the cultural significance of that helps tell some stories of back then and now. Can you share more about that? Yes, quilting in its origins, particularly for Black women, uh, Black women who were enslaved, was just a matter of taking what they had to make do to bring some warmth and comfort to their homes, to their family. And it was also uh, something that women who were cultured of a certain class to show that you were worthy to be you know, a domestic goddess, that you knew how to quilt and exercise precision in sewing. So it runs the spectrum of, of you know, kind of class hierarchies in America. Wow, and what do the quilts you create mean to you? What is your inspiration? What do you draw from? I draw inspiration everywhere and from everything. There's one quilt in the exhibit called Feeling Orange Again But Blue Sometimes that was inspired by a song as I was driving down the highway from Lettucey with the same title and I was like, oh, orange and blue, that'd be pretty and see what happens there. There's a quilt in the exhibit that I made to celebrate the first birthday of my niece. Her name is Amber. And so I wanted to make a quilt that she could look at as she was an adult and say, this was something my aunt made for me. So it's amber. It's got purple because Bibi Biblically purple signifies royalty. I quilted in the middle with Adrinka symbols of, for wisdom and creativity. So I'm giving this to her as I wish for her life to be. So that's one of the things for inspiration. There's a quilt by Miss Betty Bonds, who she wanted to capture her childhood memory, memories growing up in rural Tennessee and with her sisters. So it's a, what we call a narrative quilt. It tells a story. So there's some quilts there that are narrative. There's some quilts there that are just Explorations in color and pattern, and just try to see what works. Um, there's there's some quilts there that are just all African fabrics to celebrate, you know, our African connection. So there's a variety of quilts and a variety of inspirations that re, that are reflected in them. I love that you've pulled from so many different things to bring this together. We were looking at some of the video and pictures of the quilts in the exhibit as you were talking. How did you pick this art up? How did you pick up this? It's so funny because growing up, I had had no desire to sew, hated sewing, uh, and, and hopefully I'm not dating myself, but as uh, a junior high school, we had to take home economics, and I liked the cooking part, but I didn't want to sew, so I found a way to escape the sewing. But uh, I was teaching a, a assistant professorship at Smith College, a colleague of mine, we were at orientation, and she said she was a quilter, and I kind of... Uh, stumbled and tried not to yawn. <laughs> and then when I went to her home, I saw these quilts and I said, is this what you do? And she said, yes. Yeah. Oh, you have to teach me how to do this. And the minute I put the needle to the fabric, I kind of tapped into this visceral connection with my great grandmother, my grandmother, my mother, all who sewed and who were artistic as well. And I felt that connection and I was hooked. Oh, I love that bringing point. that back, especially hearing the first thing that you talked about, which was the ancestry of this. Yes. And the history of it. I love that you've brought that to now. Yes. And one of the things that stood out to me about hearing your story is that you've chosen to sew by hand instead of yes. using a machine. Right. How, what was that choice like? What, well, why did you I put that? some thought into, you know, being one who knows our African American history, I'm all, I teach literature in our department, so I look at the way that black women writers use this as well. But there was something where they used just what they had. And at that time, they had no technology. They had no sewing machines. They had their hands. They had the needle they had thread and there's something a, a handmade quilt a handmade anything but a handmade quilt has a particular patina it has a certain richness that is transferred from that maker to that object that is different when it's done with machine. And I love that richness. I love the time that it takes, the care that it shows. That's significant to me, and I want to keep that that tradition alive. So I 
I always insist if anyone wants to learn from me, they have to do their first quilt by hand. I love that. That's really nice. Thank you for sharing that with us and sharing oh, your pleasure. art with us. We Absolutely. appreciate that. It's also nice to learn the history behind what we do. Yes, see. yes. Thank you for having me, and I'm delighted to meet you. Great, great to meet you as well. Dr. Tracy Vaughn Manley, thank you for being yes. with us from Northwestern. And again, you can view quilts by Dr. Vaughn Manley and others by visiting the Norris University Center. That's at Nor Northwestern University. Again, the exhibit is up until March 4th, so plenty of time to go and see it.